Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Welcome to another khutbah, inshallah. I'll get started here shortly. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In alhamdulillah wa nasta'inu wa nasta'inu. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In alhamdulillah wa nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu 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 يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا كولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم my dear brothers and sisters, all thanks and praise are due to Allah. We seek his help, we seek his forgiveness, and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. And whoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messengers. Oh, you have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. Oh, you have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will amend for you your deeds, forgive your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained a great attainment. Amabad. My dear brothers and sisters, each month as I take my turn here to speak as a khatib, I've been talking about the 99 names of Allah, or at least I've been progressively picking up three of those names and discussing them with you. Today, I wanted to take a little break from that journey so that I can talk about something else that is relevant to all of us. While I won't be talking directly or discussing the 99 names of Allah, this discussion today is about our connection with Allah and building it stronger. Recently in the news, you may have heard or noticed mention of Facebook and Instagram. Uh, there's been some reports about this in Wall Street Journal. You may have also heard that this person who is a whistleblower uh, was employed at Facebook, collected documents, research papers, memos, presentations, things like that, that showed the level at which the executives were favoring the revenue over the impact of the algorithms that Facebook has running out there. Um, and these are fairly powerful algorithms able to manipulate you know, a lot of different uh, things within the data that's coming into them. And the research paper also shared with a journalist hinted at the damaging effects of Facebook on children and adults alike, especially the effect of Instagram on young girls. Now, this person remained anonymous until you know, their 60 Minutes interview. Uh, that's a show on CBS. And now everybody knows who this person is. Everybody knows their identity. And this person has been you know, recently testifying also in the Senate. Um, now, this particular discussion, I don't want to turn into you know, negative or positive impact about Facebook or social media, uh, but these documents did show something about the way social media works, the way how it favors engagement, uh, and how they were able to turn this engagement down during you know, the election season and then turn it back up once that was done, reaching you know, other um, events that happened and right afterwards, specifically in, in the following months of the elections in January and so on. Um, but, you know, again, controversial content, not something I want to touch on today. But what I do want to mention, though, is use this as a segue into how that affects us and our relationship. So in social media, the way they measure things is through engagement, which is just, you know, one of the many ways in which they measure this. And that particular type of engagement is how, you know, we get influenced, we get pulled into you know, clicking on those links, commenting on those things. So using that as the backdrop for a second and talking about how that affects our everyday relationships, that's what I want to try and focus on today. And more specifically, I want to bring our attention to, uh, you know, the impacts that it has on us and our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the analogy I like to use for myself is to think about my relationships as circles. So another way to think about them is community. So our work is, is one circle. It's a community of professionals working together towards the same organizational goals. Our school is another example of a circle. It's a community of teachers and students working towards the spreading of knowledge. 
Our immediate family is another circle, and that's a community of individuals who are related to us by birth and not by choice. And our friends is another example of a circle, which is a community of people who enjoy the interactions with one another. And these are just some examples that we all move in and out of, or circles in which we move in and out of every single day. And us gathering here online today as part of the Muslim space community is another example of a circle organized by our desire to seek the pleasure of Allah with others who want the same thing. So regardless of the circle we move in and out of, they all have an impact on us. And most of the time, these impacts are undetectable by us. All these circles have one thing in common, my dear brothers and sisters, they have our implicit permission to change us. For example, when you engage with someone in conversation, inevitably you will walk away either learning something from them or teaching something to them. You or the other person did not have to stop for a minute and say, okay, let's exchange permission slips here just so I can uh, explain this to you or just so you can teach something to me. And this is especially true when we talk about social media and websites online. Think about the last time you read the terms and conditions on a website or an app and thought you were not going to accept them. I certainly rarely read them and I should be reading them just to know exactly what I'm giving up. Um, whether, we, whether we pay attention to it consciously or not, we are being changed by the relationships that we keep and maintain. So if we stay in a circle long enough, we will begin to use the language that we hear in that circle. We will begin to act in a way that's consistent with the community of people in that circle. So much so that people who might interact with us regularly might be able to predict even how we might act or what we might say and how we might say it. And this is the power of influence. And we all have it. There's a hadith where our beloved Prophet Sallallahu said, a man follows the religion of his friend. So each one should consider whom he makes his friend. It is important for us to make sure that we surround ourselves by those who will have a positive influence on us. And if the pleasure of Allah is important to us, then we should surround ourselves by those who share exactly that same value. And this is especially important when it comes to choosing spouses. When you spend enough time with your spouse, you reflect them just as much as they will reflect you. And if religion and the pleasure of Allah are important in that relationship, then what will materialize may not be the best for you in this world if it's not that important. Uh, in fact, I will argue that the best of relationships are those formed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When people who may not be well acquainted with one another gather for the love and remembrance of Allah, that is one of the best of gatherings. One such gathering is the Friday prayers. In, in Surah Al-Jum'ah, verse number nine, we are reminded that, O oh believers, when, when the call to prayer is made on Friday, then proceed diligently to the remembrance of Allah and leave off your business. That is best for you if only you knew. For our hearts, the remembrance of Allah is like a good scrub. So if you imagine with me for a moment, a brass container sitting on a shelf for years, the natural environment, the humidity will cause this container to tarnish and change color. The best way to get rid of this tarnish is to use a slightly acidic cleaning compound, a cloth and some elbow power to rub all that tarnish away. Uh, and if you're like me, you probably saw grandparents who were you know, rubbing these brass containers, finding some lemon juice, maybe some vinegar even, putting it all together and cleaning this stain off. And the remembrance of Allah is like that cleaning compound, the cloth, the elbow power, rubbing away all that tarnish from our heart. In Surah Al-Rad, verse 28, we are told, surely in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find comfort. And how we can engage in the remembrance of Allah, many, many ways. We can recite, for example, La ilaha illallah repeatedly. Uh, recite Surah Al-Fatiha repeatedly. Recite Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah hilazim repeatedly. And these are just some of the ways in which we can engage ourselves in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in some ways, it's, it's like meditation. You're taking time away to focus yourself on just one thing. And this is, if you think about all the tools we have in Islam, we have tools for meditation. We have tools for focus. We have tools for livening ourselves up through, for example, the Hajjid prayer. You know, those are all tools that we have available to us as Muslims. So we should take advantage of these tools whenever we, we have the opportunity to present. 
So just like our physical heart fills the rest of our body with blood that is clean and filled with nourishment, our spiritual heart needs the remembrance of Allah to carry this nourishment to our entire being. It nourishes our soul when we engage in the remembrance of Allah. It gives that warm, fuzzy feeling for our creator and brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like the physical heart is a muscle that needs a workout to stay healthy, the spiritual heart needs a workout too, to strengthen it in order to maintain that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can this spiritual muscle of ours become even stronger. In the online social media world, our interactions with posts and comments, chats that, that uh, you know, start from these comments influence us in so many different ways. The way we behave online also becomes part of our character and begins to manifest itself in the real world, or as some of us would call it, the offline world. Um, this is where being self-aware is, is so critical, so very important. And not all of us are self-aware. To a greater extent, some of us are more self-aware than others. Uh, and it's all a journey. You know, some of us might become more self-aware earlier in our lives. Some of us might become more self-aware later in our lives. But just recognizing the fact that we must be self-aware, we should pay attention to the changes to our personal self, to our personal psychology, uh, to our physical self. Those are the kinds of changes that we should all be paying attention to on ourselves. Um, you know, others perhaps may never even see any improvement in their personal awareness, but that again, part of that journey, and it has to be a conscious journey for all of us. With the pandemic still raging around us, you know, many of us still have some relationships that we lost. Many of us still have relationships that um, we could never rebuild for whatever reason, you know, you know, death being one of them. And many of us even are in this situation where we miss the people with whom we used to interact on a regular basis. You know, whether it was at work, whether it was at school, on the mosque, each one of us can probably think of at least one such person or one such relationship uh, that, that uh, they're going to miss or that they no longer interact with or, or enjoy at the same level. You know, if nothing else, this pandemic has certainly made us take stock of the relationships that we do have. At least that's true for myself. I don't want to speak for everybody, but at least for me, it's made me more conscious about the relationships that I have, the relationships that I truly value, and more importantly, the relationships that I know will bring me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are the little things that you know, we should be able to pick out uh, from our relationships because nurturing our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that we need to do and instill within ourselves. It's not something that somebody's gonna constantly tell you, hey, you need to do this, hey, you need to do this. That just never happens, but it has to be something that we cultivate within us, within ourselves. And the relationships that we, we nurture are part of that journey of that cultivation. So if we think about the company we used to keep for a minute, how many of those, those uh, relationships brought you consistently that feeling of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, wanting you to be, you know, doing more for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, at least, you know, you must have perceived it that way in some way. And how did that influence your behavior when you're surrounded by people who were always doing things that uh, were for the, for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's doing charity work, whether it's um, hanging out with people who remembered or were engaged in the remembrance of Allah. When you were in these circles, did you feel the urge to do more of those good deeds as well? Did you feel the desire to connect yourself with these people so that you can feel more motivated to do more of those deeds? And that again, my dear brothers and sisters, is a power of influence. The people who we choose to surround ourselves with has a direct influence on our mindset, which in turn drives our behavior, whether it's offline or online all of those interactions are in some way changing us. There's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari as narrated by Abdullah bin Masood. A man came to Allah's messenger وسلم, and said, Oh Allah's messenger, what do you say about a man who loves some people but cannot catch up with their good deeds? Allah's messenger وسلم, responded, everyone will be with those whom he loves. Alhamdulillah. I love this hadith. It is a reminder to me that I don't have to struggle alone to bring myself closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't have to feel like it's a solo event. It feels more like a team sport. How amazing it would be if we had a team of people who got together regularly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do good by fulfilling their obligations and responsibilities 
as described in the Quran and Sunnah. Being good citizens, being good neighbors, being good friends, family members, and then topping it all off with the remembrance of Allah. How amazing would that feel? And the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is telling us that we will be with those whom we love. What if we love being with those people? And these are the people that Allah describes as being destined for Jannah. As in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 82, we are told, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And those who believe and do good will be the residents of paradise. They will be there forever. Alhamdulillah. Why would we want to spend most of our time in any other company? Inshallah, I will conclude this khutbah in the second half. أَقُولُ كَوْلِ هَسَى وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلَسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ غَفُورُ الْلَّهِينَ I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and to the rest of the Muslims. So ask him for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the merciful. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, the exalted, and blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, in Islam, while I, don't continue, while I didn't continue the theme of discussing um, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this week, I hope you found some benefit from this discussion. I personally wanted to use this opportunity to remind myself first, and then all of you, that the world around us is always seeking to capture our attention. It's how big tech companies make money. Uh, I mean, it's how the media works. It is our attention that is what they want because that is how they generate revenue. And our attention is always something we should protect dearly. We protect all of our personal data. We take extra care to make sure our passwords are difficult to remember. But that's just only part of it. Our attention should be in that same list of things we're protecting. If our attention is focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it is not being used for uh, important things like earning a living or learning or any other activity that is necessary for us to perform, we are protecting ourselves from the whispers of shaitan and the many distractions that keep us away from the remembrance of Allah. And there are days I'm sure that all of us have where we just cannot escape you know, what we need to do and, and, and just you know, decompress for a minute. There, there are days like that for sure. But in the meantime, just having that conscious awareness that our attention should be just as important and something we guard just like we guard over time so that we can give some of it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that I want to inshallah communicate to you today. And I hope you know, that is a message that you receive from me. Inshallah, the next time we meet, uh, promise we'll continue our discussion on the names of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, let us pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our hearts towards him. And may we all find inside our heart the strength to stay firm on the path of Allah and may Allah forgive our shortcomings, for he is oft forgiving, most merciful. O Allah, when we stray, please forgive us, and do not let our hearts deviate uh, after you have guided us, and grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. O Allah, bless us with pious spouses and offspring, who will be the joy of our hearts and make us models for the righteous. O Allah, please have mercy upon our parents and the believers on the day of judgment. Forgive our sins, absolve us of our misdeeds, and allow us each to die as one of the virtuous. O oh Allah, please guide the Muslim Ummah closer to you and protect us from those who lead us astray intentionally or unintentionally. And O oh Allah, please guard our health, the health of those who we love and the health of those who endeavor to provide care and service to the members of our community who are in need. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina wa kuru ta'ayunum wa ja'alna lil muttakina imama. Rabbana faqfir lana zunubina wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawafana ma'al abrar. Rabbana rabbi ja'alni mukim wa salati wa min zuriyati. ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا عليك وتوكلنا واليك وانبنا واليك المصير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنه للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا انك انت العزيز الحكيم ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يَعِزُّكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ فَاذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ At this time, my brothers and sisters, I'd like to conclude this khutbah. Wish you all a blessed Jum'ah.